In this video, I'm going to show you a total of 8 insanely powerful builds that will help you to easily dominate Elden Ring and its DLC, no matter if you are in New Game Plus or all the way up in New Game Plus 7. The purpose of these builds is dealing stupid amounts of damage in the shortest time possible in PvE scenarios, while maintaining an enjoyable gameplay. To get the same performance I'm showcasing, be sure to watch the entire video so you don't miss any important detail of each build. When it comes to a holy damage build, everyone tends to think that the damage it will deal is not gonna be significant because of the late game scenarios, where most enemies and bosses are extremely resistant to this type of damage. However, with the Euporia that is not the case. This unique Twin Blade from the DLC is an extraordinary holy damage weapon that scales mostly of faith and strength. In the current patch 1.15 is one of the best weapons available to deal a really high amount of damage thanks to its unique buffing system that dramatically increases the potential of the Euporia Vortex. The completely busted unique skill of this weapon that once it reaches its max power it becomes an absolute laser of holy destruction. With this one we are going to use the Euporion plus 10 and then still we have available to cast our main buffs. We are going to be using any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist of War to easily dodge the Radan's light explosion attack and the Commander Gaius charge attack. We can include this weapon with any other build but I will not mention it to avoid being repetitive. We are going to be using the Rakshasa's armor set that will increase our damage by a total of 8% if we wear the entire set. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Sacred Scorpion Charm, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Roden Windsor Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Holy Shrouding Crack Tear, but you can also use the Thorny Crack Tear. This weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle next to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the most out of this weapon, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 26 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 33 on Strength and Dexterity, and the AD on Faith. Golden Vow and Howl of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. And as we have a very high level of Faith, we can use any other incantation that we find useful. I strongly recommend you to use the blessing of the earth tree to counter the HP drain effect of the blood sucking crack tier. As you can see I have my scattershot blessing on the level 20 and to deal the max amount of damage possible in DLC scenarios, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. It's difficult to imagine what were they thinking when creating this weapon but I really can't complain. The Jesus Will is a very original concept with lots of interesting features. Most people including myself didn't know the real destructive power this weapon hides. It's normal to believe it lacks of damage when you use it prioritizing the utilization of its unique skill spinning wheel. This chainsaw attack could be one of the most broken attacks of the entire game. From software knew this even before releasing the game, so they didn't allow this attack to increase damage with the successive attacks buffs. Instead they added a unique spinning art to attack that actually triggers the these buffs. I think they did that to limit the potential of the weapon. In that case well that didn't go as expected cause as you can see under the right parameters this thing is stupidly broken. In this case we are going to use the Jesus wheel on plus 10 and then still we have available to cast our main buffs. And as we are not going to use the skill of the weapon we will use the jellyfish shield. The unique skill of this weapon will increase our damage by around 12% for 30 seconds. We are going to be rocking 3 pieces of the Rakshasa's armor set that will increase our damage by a total of 6% and we will combine it with the white mask for a 10% damage boost with each bleed proc. The most effective talismans for this build are the Axe Talisman, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodent Windsor Insignia and the Lord of Blood's Exultation. In our Physic Flask, the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear will be highly effective. With this build we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, but if you don't like crafting feel free to use Flame Grand Me Strength. And as we are going to use a lot of Archer attacks, this one is going to devour stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle next to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 14 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 66 on Strength, 61 on Dexterity and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow and Flame Granny Strength are going to be our main buffs. And to deal the max amount of damage possible on DLC scenarios, we are going to use the Scattered Blessing on the level 20. The classic dual curve swords have always been a reliable source of damage in this game. Using dual weapons of this class, grants a really high damage output thanks to the fast rate of attack of the power stance moveset. Combining this particular feature with a 
powerful status effects such as Bleed can get these weapons into the meta for PvE scenarios. But the Dancing Blades of Rana are built different. You only need one to enjoy the power stance moveset when two hand in it, and it has a fantastic unique skill called Unending Dance that you can perform until you are running out of stamina or FP. The cool part of this skill is that it hits very fast and it does activate the successive attacks buffs. With this one, we are going to use the Dancing Blade of Rana on plus 10 and then it's still we have available to cast your main buffs. As a Corp Sword, this weapon deals a very poor stance damage. That's why I'm going to be using the club on plus 25 with the Crack Blade of War, regardless of the affinity, that doesn't matter, I'm just going to use it to help me with the stance damage. And I'm going to be rocking the Dancer's Armor set to increase the damage of the unending dance by 10%. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodent Wings or Insignia, and the Claw Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear once again. What a fantastic combo of tears we have here, guys. Once again, with this one, we are going to be dealing only physical damage. That's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic. If you don't want to use this item or you don't want to craft it, feel free to use Flame Grant Me a Strength. For some reason, this weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina recovery speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 60 on Vigor, 27 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 11 on Strength, 99 on Dexterity, and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. And once again, if you want to deal the max damage possible in DLC scenarios, be sure to have your Scattery Blessing on the level 20. It is impossible to talk about broken builds and not include a setup based purely on Strength. This combo here is designed to turn off your brain and destroy your targets with the lowest effort possible. I will say it's the definitive Unga Bunga type build. You just gotta jump and attack to entirely delete the most challenging bosses of the game in seconds. In my opinion, the best feature of this combo is that it doesn't require an advanced skill level from the player and it doesn't rely on status effects, which means it's going to be effective in any scenario. It's just the raw power of physical damage combined with a solid strength value. Now we will use two rusted anchors on plus 25 with the crack blade dash of war on the heavy affinity. In the same way, we will use the start fist on plus 25 with the crack blade dash of war on the heavy affinity. And we need any seal we have available to cast our main boss. I'm going to be using the great Breath's black wheel armor to increase the damage of the jump attacks by 10% and 3 pieces of the Rakshasa armor set that will increase my damage by a total of 6%. The most effective talismans for this build are the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. And if we are going to use the power stance jump attack of the heavy rusted anchors, we are going to use the Spear Talisman and the Claw Talisman. With this talisman combo and armor set combination, we will get the most out of the rusted anchor setup. But if we want to use the Starfist mostly, then we will use the entire Rakshasa armor set with the Axe Talisman and the Dagger Talisman combined with the Rodent Windsor Insignia and the Millicent's Prosthesis. But honestly, if you want to get the max damage possible, then you should go with the rusted anchors. In our flask of wondrous physic, we are going to use the blood sucking crack tear and the thorny crack tear. But you can also use the stone barb crack tear, which is very useful with this type of builds. With these weapons, we are going to be dealing only physical damage. That's why our best body buff is going to be blood boil aromatic. But if you don't like crafting, feel free to use flame grand me strength. And as any other power stance build, this one consumes a lot of stamina. So be sure to craft some pickle turtle necks to boost your stamina recovery speed. To obtain the max performance of our weapons and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 60 on vigor, 18 on mind, 50 on endurance, 99 on strength, only 10 on dexterity, and 25 on faith. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. Once again, we are going to be rocking our Scattery Blessing on the level 20. Having one of the most overpowered weapons of the game a few minutes from the starting point of the game and not paying attention to it must be considered a sin. The Reduvia is without a doubt the best dagger available in all of Elden Ring. This little friend doesn't care at all about the size of your next target. It will relentlessly throw blades of blood at a very fast pace dealing a lot of damage while building up bleed incredibly quick and if you use it at point blank range the physical part of the weapon does damage as well. One of the most underrated weapons of this game when it comes to damage per second. An absolute beast that you can obtain really quick and nobody uses it. But in defense of all the people that don't like this weapon it is true that it gives the feeling that you are spamming a single attack the entire time. Maybe because that's exactly what we are doing. And now we will use the Reduvia on plus 10 and then we have available to cast our main buffs. It doesn't need to be upgraded. Sadly the Reduvia is a dagger which means that the stance damage this weapon deals is very bad. For that reason, to help me with that task, I'm going to be using the club on plus 25 with the crack blade dash of war on the bleed affinity. And to increase the damage of the Reduvia blood blade, I'm going to be using the entire Ants back set. As you know, this armor set increases the damage of the dynasty skills by around 15%. And you might be thinking if it's worth using the white mask with this one because it's a bleed build. But the truth is that it's not possible, because this one is going to roughly increase your damage by a 
above 1% compared to using the entire Ansbach set. And I really think that it's not worth using that ugly mask just for 1% extra damage. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rotten Wings or Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. As you can see, these are the most overpowered tears of the entire game. Once again, with this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage. That's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic. But if you don't want to craft this item, feel free to use Flame Granny Strength. And this weapon by itself doesn't consume a lot of stamina, but we are going to be spamming the skill like crazy. Then we will need a very fast stamina recovery speed. So if you want, you can craft some Pickle Torten Legs, but I feel like in this case, it's a little bit optional. This build is going to shine only if we use 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 11 on Strength, 46 on Dexterity, 25 on Fate, and 80 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Granny Strength are going to be our main buffs. And if you want to build a bleed faster, you can use the Swarm of Flies. This spell is going to be extremely useful because we have a very high level of Arcane. And to deal the max amount of damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses, be sure to have your Scattery Blessing at the level 20. I remember reading my comment section and getting Carlos craft a frenzy build, use the Sword of Damnation, craft a Midra build, and I was like, dang it, they want it and I really don't think it's gonna work. Surprisingly, this build is one of the most broken face setups I tried so far. It really deals a huge amount of damage while being extremely versatile. The Gracer of Damnation, however, is not the main character here. Those are all the frenzy flame incantations that I'll show you in a second. The thing here is that Midra's weapon deals holy damage instead of fire damage and building up madness. It's very strange considering that this is the weapon used by the Lord of Frenzy Flame. Anyways, the Gracer of Damnation has a very cool unique skill that can be used against NPC-like enemies to deal a fantastic critical hit. And it is not terrible against normal enemies, so thumbs up for this build. This one is a little bit more complicated. We are going to be using the Gracer of Damnation on plus 10 and we are going to use any seal that has a very good fate scaling because we are going to use it to cast our incantations and buffs. And in our offhand, we are going to use the Frenzied Flame seal. It doesn't need to be upgraded. We are going to use it only to get the passive effect that will increase the damage of the Frenzy Flame incantations. And we will use the Madding Hand that will increase our damage by 7.5% with each Madness proc. As you can see, we don't need to fit the requirements to effectively use this weapon. We just need it for its passive effect. And we just have to use it in our offhand. I'm going to be rocking 3 pieces of the Rakshasa's Armor set for a 6% damage boost and the Black Dumpling that will increase our damage by 10% with each Madness proc and it will stack effectively with the Madding Hand. The best talismans we can use for this build are the H One's Exultation, the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Flux Canvas Talisman, and the Faithful Canvas Talisman. This setup is going to work perfectly fine with the incantations, but if we wish to get the most out of the weapon and the Golden Crux unique skill, we should use the H One's Exultation, the Shard of Alexander, the Dagger Talisman, and the Sacred Scorpion Charm. The same thing is going to happen with the Flask of Wondrous Physic. For the incantations, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear with the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear, but to increase the potential of the weapon, we should replace the Flame Shrouding Crack tier with the Holy Shrouding Crack tier. This build also consumes a lot of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the max damage possible with this build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 37 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 40 on Strength, 15 on Dexterity, and 80 on Faith. Golden Vow and Howl of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. Frenzied Burst, the Frenzied Flame, Undurable Frenzy, Unescapable Frenzy, and Midra's Frenzied Flame are going to be our main source of damage. And to deal lots of damage in the DLC, we are going to be using the Scattered Blessing at the level 20. Now we have the OG, the real OG, one of the most legendary weapons in Elden Ring and one that I would really love to see in future from Subwars games. To me, this one is as special as the Dark Moon Greysword, but significantly more powerful. With the recent buff of the Relana's Cameo Talisman, they turned this Traitor into a one-shot machine without having to use an extremely complex buff routine. Nonetheless, it's quite interesting that the magic part of the blade is not the most powerful. Even when using higher values of intelligence than faith. In the clips you're watching, I was running 60 faith and 80 intelligence, which means that my damage when using the comet attack should be more powerful than the fire wave. But this is not the case. It seems like the fire attack will always be a better alternative and it will only fail against enemies that have a really high resistance to fire damage. And if you cover your target on oil before attacking, then it's even crazier. For this one, we are going to use the Sword of Night and Flame on plus 10. Any seal we have available to cast our main buffs, we will need to use the Asurus Glintstone staff to cast Terra Magic as fast as possible, but if you don't have it, you can use any other stuff you have available. And in this case, we can use the Mystery Cord on plus 25 with the Raptor of the Mistache of War to dodge the Radan's Light Explosion attack on the Magic Affinity to deal a tremendous critical hit if we have the opportunity to do it. But it is completely optional.
final. With this one, I'm going to be rocking the entire Rakshas as armor set for that 8% damage boost. But if you only want to use the magic attack of the weapon, you can also use the Spade Blade set. But be mindful that this armor set is going to increase the damage only of the magic attack. On the other hand, the Rakshas as armor set will boost the damage in general. That's why I prefer to use this one in most scenarios. The most important talismans for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Relana's Cameo, the All Lord's Talisman, and depending on which attack you are going to prioritize, we are going to decide whether the Fire Scorpion Charm or the Magic Scorpion Charm. The same thing is going to happen with the Physic Flask. If we want to go with the Fire Wave, we use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. If we want to use the Magic Stream, we use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear with the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. Now to increase our fire damage dramatically, we are going to use the Hefty Oil Pot or the regular version of the Oil Pots. The regular Oil Pot will increase our fire damage by 50%, while the Hefty Oil Pot will do it by 65% on the next hit that deals fire damage. This item is extremely useful and is going to help you to deal a tremendous amount of damage with the fire wave attack. And for some reason this weapon devours stamina so be sure to craft some pickle turtle legs to boost your stamina recovery speed. To get the most out of this weapon we are going to use 50 on vigor, 26 on mind, 30 on endurance, 12 on strength and dexterity, 80 on intelligence and 60 on faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. And once again we are going to be using our Scarlet Blessing on the level 20. This way we will get the max damage possible in the DLC. As with almost any other powerful build of the base game, the Mogwin Sacred Spear was also nerfed before the release of the DLC, or in one of the earliest updates. But even with the huge nerf they applied to this weapon, it is still being one of the most broken weapons you can use to completely obliterate the DLC as fast as possible. On the other hand, it's not as easy to use as the other options of this list, but it deals a significantly higher damage, sometimes defeating the bosses before they can even attack back. Honestly, I couldn't decide which one is more powerful, the Sword of Night and Flame or the Mogwin Sacred Spear. In my opinion, when using the Hefty Oil Pot, the Sword of Night and Flame is way better. But by itself, without anything but the stats, buffs and basic equipment, the Mogwin Sacred Spear wins. To me, the winner is the last one, but I would like to know which one is the best for you. Finally, we are going to use the Mogwin Sacred Spear on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. If you want, you can use any weapon with Seppuku to start the fight with the Bleed buffs active. For that reason, to deal a little bit of extra stance damage, I'm going to be using the Club on plus 25 with the Crack Blade Dash of War on the Bleed Affinity. This one is completely optional, but in order to effectively use the skill, I recommend you to use this weapon. I'm going to be rocking 3 pieces of the Rakshas as armor set that will increase our damage by a total of 6% and we will use the White Mask for a 10% damage boost with Ditch Bleed proc. The most effective talismans for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Fire Scorpion Charm and the Old Lord's Talisman. In our Flask of Wonders Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. And I really don't know why, but this weapon consumes a lot of stamina, so once again be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. The best stats for this build are 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 30 on Strength, 14 on Dexterity, 33 on Faith and 80 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs, but you can also use Flame Granny Strength if you don't want to take any extra damage. And if you want to proc Bleed faster, you can use the Swarm of Flies. Once again, we are using a very high Arcane value, so this spell is going to be extremely useful. And as you can see, I have my Scarlet Blessing on the level 20, and if you want to deal the max amount of damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. Now I'll show you how to buff your character with every build. This buff routine is going to be pretty much the same with any other build. First of all, we are going to use our Flask of Wondrous Physic, then we are going to cast Golden Vow, and immediately after that we are going to eat a Pickle Torten Neck. Then we will have to use our Body Buff, it can be Blood Boy Aromatic, Howl of Shabriri, or Flame Granny Strength. In this case, it is going to be Howl of Shabriri. Finally, refill your HP, your FP, and with that you should be ready to go. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Elden Ring videos. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos, and I'll see you in the next one.